Okay, here's a quick run through of uh, how I use Kiwi Motor to prepare G code for my little CNC machine. This particular job is to prepare a metal plate. This is the metal plate, it's three millimeters thick, but my model of the plate is actually made at 3.5 millimeters thick so that when I cut the model out when I cut the plate out it will cut down an extra half millimeter so it cuts all the way through into the support material so it cuts out the, the plate properly so first of all we'll load up a drill process that's already selected the correct tool my fake one millimeter drill because I'm just going to spot drill the corners like a center punch mark uh, and I'm going to tell it to not to drill through by setting that to a zero that's correct and now I'm going to select the places where I want to do that too clicking on them turns them red that will be sorted out by following operations as well that one as it turns out but let's send a point it anyway so that's the drill operation done okay let's bring up an outline operation the outline operation um, I've already set up from my previous job that I did on here feed rate is good 900 900 millimeters per second plunge rate 200 millimeters 900 millimeters per minute rather 200 millimeters per minute plunge rate stepping down half a millimeter per pass uh, so 900 millimeters per minute might seem like quite a fast cut rate but I only do very shallow cuts it's a two flute cutter it's four millimeter end mill I've selected so it'll go whizzing around doing these things however this pass uh, we want to do the inside only and let's see what that looks like so uh, we see it will do those inside features and as I predicted a four millimeter cutter will cut out this six millimeter diameter hole so that looks good so next we're going to add another outline operation to cut out the outside now what I haven't done yet is to put any tabs on this and the tabs are over here and uh, with the two height of one, depth of one, that's fine. Um, let's add some tabs. Put one there. Put one there. Spin the whole thing around. Put one there. Put one there. That's good to me. Oh. This is not working very well. I did that wrong. Let's do it again. tick to show that I finished the process there we go so the outline operation I want to cut around the outside of the part so I want to click outside only and emit through so that it doesn't try to do these parts so I'm going to press control and disable those two parts see they're greyed out now because I, I control left clicked on those two items so now when I do slice and preview it is only generating G code for that one that is not greyed out and you see it has in fact selected only the outline that I wanted and it's doing that with a four millimeter end mill again so these two operations will be done one after the other with the same tool and that will be after I've done the drilling operation. So let's do the, all three of them. Of course, I've just changed the operation, so now we have to slice it again 
before we can preview and animate the whole thing and look at it. So it goes around and spots the holes first of all, then does this tool change to the 4mm end mill and it goes around, cuts out these internal features. This is still on a big metal plate of course at the moment because it hasn't cut out the outside yet. That's down to minus three millimeters, then it'll go down to minus three and a half. Now that's the final, these are the final passes on these features, and then it'll go whizzing around and do all that. Great. Now I've actually made a mistake there. I was messing around with the stock height. I'm going to set that back to zero because that's how I work. I made a mistake there, and I'm going to regenerate the code all over again press preview and animate and again this is the fantastic feature of being able to look at the tool height here first cut is at minus half a millimeter then minus one minus one and a half minus two minus two and a half minus three minus three and a half and at this point it should be cutting into the support material and then it whizzes round and does the cutout of the outline and the tool goes to its safe height over here which is two millimeters off the top of the material so that is the, the completed toolpath generation and next I need to export my toolpaths now my CNC machine doesn't understand tool change commands. I have to change the tools manually and then recalibrate the height each time. So I need to export this as two separate uh, files. And so what I'm going to do first of all is to disable those two so it only exports the drill. Uh, and I'm going to re-slice it and preview to check it's right and there's, there's just this spot drilling. I'm going to export that. Looks about right. There's a lot of comments. That I've left the comments in. Down here, so there's the tool change. I'm going to fake one millimeter. I'm going to have to comment that out because my Gerbil um, controller doesn't understand that. But that's fine. And we're going to save as. It's in the appropriate directory. I'm going to call that drills. Drills only. Save and go away, finish, and then I'm going to select only the milling operations and tell it to slice that and preview, and that should be all of the bits that I want for the four millimeter end mill, and then I'm going to export that in exactly the same way. That says that will only take 10 minutes if I'm lucky. Uh, in reality, that would probably be about 20 on the CNC machine. Uh, export the G code, save as, and I'll go into the same place. I'm going to call that mills only. And that should be it. Next, the work gets uh, moved to the CNC machine, and that's Kirimoto. What a marvelous piece of software! Okay, I've already calibrated the uh, height using this device. That's a 20 millimeters. This thing's 18 and a half mil high or something like that. So that's calibrated. It's at X naught, Y naught, 20 millimeters high. Now we're going to do the spot drilling, um, which should drill the holes in the corner. You can see this is a piece of an old base plate that I'm salvaging to use. Um, and wish me luck. This thing's not particularly good at doing spot drilling. This thing's not rigid enough to do a good job. So um, this could be messy. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now I need to calibrate the height uh, when I change the tool and we'll do that in a moment. Okay, that's calibrated. The probe it now knows where zero is because it knows how thick this is. Now we're ready to load up and run the second set of tool paths. Okay, start the mill. Let's go for 20,000 RPM. And here we go. Right, got some cleaning up to do. Okay, so here we have the same plate after a quick deburr operation. Haven't drilled the holes and the, the pilot holes yet, but that's the same thing after I've cleaned it up with a rag and a deburring tool and really a file to take the little nubs off the end where it was held in the base plate. I might spray the edges with some black paint maybe, not too sure. So here's the finished device. Uh, it has... The wire fell off. This is the Wobbuzomb. And you see it's got a motor at one end of it. Over here. And we shall connect the motor up. Hit one connection and another connection and guess what happens? It wobbles. Behold the wobbuzomb. So that is the purpose of the plate. This is for a project which will be revealed soon. There you go. Simple mechanical oscillator.